What we've got in the studio today is the long-awaited, highly anticipated Sigma 7200F 2.8. Ooh, look at this lens. This thing right here means business. Now, let's be honest, this lens has definitely been well overdue for Sony users, but we finally have it now, and I would like to say a massive thanks to Sigma UK for loaning me this lens so I can make some content with it and share my thoughts on this lens. Speaking of which, I am planning on doing a review and a street POV with it, so if you don't want to miss any of that, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Now, I haven't actually taken a single photograph with this lens yet. Today is going to be my very first time using it, and for my very first time, I wanted to shoot something epic with it, really put this lens to the max to truly see what what it's capable of. So a few days ago I got in contact with my good mate Dave asking if you fancy bringing this beautiful yellow Lamborghini onto the Yorkshire Moors for a photo shoot and he was like absolutely any excuse for a good drive to make some loud noises and to get some stunning photographs. So the course is set, we have the lens, we have the car and we've got the locations. All right so we've arrived at the first location with the Lambo and I think you can agree it looks pretty <laughs> stunning right there with the Moors in the background that beautiful yellow the water all right down here so we're gonna get straight on with the 70 to 200 get some shooting done and it started to rain which is definitely gonna look pretty good dave thoughts it is it down <laughs> sorry language <laughs> it's all right it's raining raining cats and dogs how are you feeling though with your car being right there on a main road i mean as long as it's not left in gear i think we're okay <laughs> just, don't to, just don't want it to still need to lurch forward into the um to the ford <laughs> So this is going to be the very first photograph I'm going to take with the brand new 70-200 from Sigma. So here we are, we're going to shoot this at f2.8, we're going to bring up the ISO to about 320, get a bit of foreground in there, and immediately we're getting some goodness. If we get a landscape one down here, it's going to look like a poster. Like every child is going to want that on their wall. <laughs> that is... Amazing. So this next shot here is going to look absolutely stunning. I'm going to shoot it in portrait. I'm going to keep it at about 70 mil. Adjust the CPL filter on the front. F28, 1640 for a second. ISO 500. No. No way. That is on my camera right now. That is absolutely beautiful. So we've got nice foreground here with all the marsh. And then we're going to shoot this at about maybe 135 mil f3.5 oh nice and maybe even do it in landscape as well get a nice mixture between landscape shots portrait shots you want a bit of everything when you're shooting cars get every angle you can possible try different things try different angles just gives you a nice variety to work with when you're getting back home and editing these beauties and then what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to switch the focus point to a spot and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the lambo right at the bottom of the frame and get the tree lines above like that. <laughs> I couldn't have asked for a better location. I used to drive, well, when I was growing up, my parents, we used to come on this road quite often. And I can remember seeing this location and just thought it always looked so stunning, but I never thought I'd be able to turn that into a photo shoot with a car like that. So North Yorkshire Moors, if you ever need to do some photo shoots, this is your place. Oh God, into the marsh I go even further. Bring the camera out to here, 1640 f2.8, ISO 500. <laughs> oh yes, get some gradient filters, radial filters, all that kind of stuff in Lightroom on these photos. And I am going to be one happy man. I'd like to get a couple of interiors. How do you... Hello. Lovely. It's going to be precarious with a 70 to 200. So, liver. Lambo, river, Lambo. <laughs> a real nice interior shot. This is a nice detail shot to focus on interior wise. Oh, look at that. We've got that center column right there looking lush. 
All right, this is a beautiful landscape shot right here. I'm using the rule of thirds and I've put the car on the lower third to get that angle right there. That is cinematic goodness right there. Oh my, that is beautiful. And right here is a really nice portrait shot. Oh, look at that. Look at that because we've got the road, we've got the trees, we've got the car at the bottom of the frame, all combined perfectly, beautifully together. And I just love the tones that we've got straight out of camera. And what we're going to be able to do with them in Lightroom once we get to editing, oh, it's just going to come alive. So we're going to be heading to the next location in a second, which is further up there. I really think this has been the perfect location. Now, I don't think anything could top this, but Dave's going to set off before us, meet us up there, but we're going to do a bit of a panning shot. Second location, and what we're going to do with the 7200 is use that 200 mil because look at where we got the Lambo position. With the trees and all that landscape behind, it's going to really give us some really good compression. That F28 is going to deliver some dynamite. Hey, dynamite! Dynamite! dynamite. <laughs> I'm going to shoot this at 1 100 of a second, F5 ISO 125, and then we're going to punch it. Oh my god! God, no way. I've actually underexposed the image a little bit for the headlights and it just looks amazing. Now I'm gonna shoot it at a bit of a different angle. Go it lower down. Oh, wow, this could be a part of a collage just so, oh yeah. Oh, wow. This next shot here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my spot mode on the headlight, keeping the headlights to the right of frame. And that way I've got the landscape in the background and I'm going to do the same again in landscape. Oh, I love that. I love the negative space that that really gives to the photo. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in landscape, hopefully. And then down here. Oh, no way, no way, no way. So I put the next shot down here. I'm at F5, 180 for a second, ISO 125. I look at the results that have been delivered right there. That is so sick. This is so good. This Sigma lens as well, absolutely spot on. The sharpness is on point. I love the focus ring right here. Controls really nicely, feels great in the hand. This is a really good lens. This has been worth the wait for a lens like this. I love it. I mean, when you're getting results like this, look at that. Look at that sauce right there. <laughs> I'm an happy chappy. So we've now swung the car around and we've got a real nice perspective right here. Dave's got the brake lights on as well. And what we're going to be able to do is utilise that, get it out at 200 mil. We are shooting at 160 for a second there, just because of the daylight, but I'm actually going to uh, bring up the ISO to 125, so I'll bring up the shutter speed a little more. Remain at F28. Ah, he's putting on gravel. One absolutely beautiful, stunning location for some final photos of this Lambo. Oh, this one right here. 1125th a second, F2A, ISO 64. That is stellar right there. That is on point. Oh, you cannot go wrong with those shots right there. We also get it in landscape as well. I think that will look real nice when we go to the middle of the road. Absolutely perfect. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I think that's where we're going to be closing this part of the video off with the 7200, because what we're going to do next is some rollers, which we're not going to use the 7200 for, probably going to use something like a 16 to 35. But I just want to say, bringing a car to this location, using a lens like this and getting the photographs that we've been able to get, uh, that just all equates to an absolutely brilliant day and these are the kind of days I love as a photographer and content creator because you could just go wild, get creative, try new things and have a lot of fun. I mean, this would have been fun no matter what camera, what lens I used, but when you get to shoot a Lambo with a location like this, it's just 
special. It brings something unique to the table and uh, I'm an happy lad. I'm an happy lad. Let's go. <laughs> all right, so we've come off the moors now and um, we've just got the Lambo getting cleaned here to get all the dirt off it because it was <laughs> filthy. I've never seen a Lambo so filthy in my life. But what we're going to do is we're going to do some rollers with it. So I'm going to actually use the Sony a7 IV with the 16 to 35, probably use the 35 mil end. Probably going to shoot between 150 for a second to 130 for a second. Uh, maybe F14, F11, around those higher numbers. Gonna get a GoPro on the top of my head so we can film some of the behind the scenes stuff. And we're gonna take up the dual carriageway. And that way, we can be like here, and the Lambo can be here, and we can just fire off a ton of great shots. Worry about it too much. Slight work, light work, not work. I ain't really do much. Get it in, ship it out, pivot route back, corner end zone. Hit a work. <laughs> The important thing if you're doing rollers though is have some kind of support for your camera because as much as I don't use these that often even when I'm doing rollers I'm gonna use one of these so I don't uh, drop the camera because you imagine if this just ended up on the dual carriageway I'd be in tears <laughs> and then hits the Lambo <laughs> Okay, so that is the photo shoot all wrapped up with the Lambo. I am so happy with all the photographs we were able to get today. Tom, thoughts? It, it couldn't have gone better. We had perfect weather, perfect Lamborghini. I mean, it got a bit mucky, but then jet wash, rollers, you know how it is. Fish bash bosh, all perfect. What was the word you used? Dy dynamite. No. Dynamite. This photo shoot was dynamite. <laughs> right, mate, yeah, see you later. Anyway. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you. I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> so I think it's safe to say that I am impressed with the Sigma 7200 F28. This thing is sharp. The autofocus is fast, accurate and reliable and the overall build quality is exceptional. Everything you'd expect from a Sigma lens to the highest tier possible. Now talking about that sharpness a little more, I would definitely say the Sigma 7200 is sharper than the Mark 1 Sony 7200, but I'm unsure how it fares against the mighty Mark 2 version that I've got right here. If there is any differences, I think they'll be minute, but when I go into the full review on this lens, I might have to do some comparison tests. Now something I do know off the top of my head is the weight of all the 7200s available for Sony E-mount cameras. Starting right here with the Sigma 7200, this thing is 1,335 grams or about 2.9 pounds and is lighter than the Sony 7200 Mark 1, which is 1,480 grams or about 3.2 pounds. However, this Sigma lens is still heavier than the Sony 7200 Mark 2. This thing is impressively light. This is only 1,080 grams or about 2.3 pounds. Despite the Sigma 7200 being a little bit heavier than the Mark II version from Sony, I don't think that is the biggest determining factor between these two lenses. That's the price. The Sony 7200 Mark II is priced at a jaw-dropping two and a half thousand pounds, and the Sigma is 1,500. I mean, that is a 1,000 pound difference between these two lenses. Think about what you could do with 1,000 pounds. You could buy yourself a brand new lens. You could get yourself some memory cards, a gimbal, some filters, a camera bag to put it all into, or maybe in Dave's case, you can have enough money for fuel to drive your Lamborghini at least home. <laughs> Sorry Dave. <laughs> For my very first hands-on experience using this lens, 
I'm impressed and I've got no real complaints about this lens. Now there is only one technical determining factor which I think would sway people from the Sigma to the Sony and that is teleconverters. So Sony do offer two teleconverters for their lenses. They have a 1.4 and a 2 times, but those same teleconverters are not compatible and don't work with the Sigma lenses and Sigma at the moment don't have any available. But I think in the future Sigma will change that. It would make sense that they did at least and I think they will make a 1.4 and a 2 times teleconverter, but I guess only time will tell with that one. Now just as a final note, all the photographs that you've seen in today's video have been edited by preset packs. If you do want to check them out, link for them is in the description below and everything that I've been using from CPL filters to the lenses to the cameras are also left in the description below if you fancy checking any of it out for yourself. But with all that said, that's where I'm going to be leaving today's video with the brand new Sigma 7200 f2.8 even though it's been out for a couple of months now it, it's still new it still count it's still valid if you've got any questions or anything let me know in the comment section below and if you did like today's video hit that like button and if you fancy subscribe to the channel it'd be great to have you on board and part of this ever so growing community but until next time create explore and inspire and i'll see you in the next one laters